In this video, we're going to finish up our coverage of truth tables by going over a few tests for semantic concepts that can be run with truth tables that are just a single line. So the goals of this lesson are first to learn how to construct these one-line truth tables for particular tests, and then to make sure you recognize which semantic properties can be tested with one-line truth tables and which ones require complete truth tables. It turns out that for many of the tests we run for these various semantic concepts, we need to look at every line of the truth table. So for example, to test validity, we need to show that there is no valuation where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So we need to look at every valuation to check that even though, as we looked at in the previous, we don't need to complete every sentence in every valuation. We at least need to look at part of every valuation. But for certain tests, we only need to show one line that meets a particular condition. And that condition will depend on the test. And to construct these one-line truth tables, we're going to work a little bit in reverse from the way we normally do. We're going to start by assigning truth values to the sentences we're interested in and work backwards to find a valuation that gives us those truth values. The challenge then with these one-line truth tables is we have to be a little bit creative. We have to reason about what assignments of truth values to those simple statement letters, the atomic sentences, make the sentences we're interested in come out with the right truth values. So let's look at some specific cases where we use these one-line truth tables. The first is to prove that a sentence is not a tautology. Remember that a tautology is a sentence that's true on every valuation. That needs a complete truth table. But to show that a sentence is not a tautology, we just have to show that at least one valuation makes the sentence false. So we're going to start with this example and try to show that this sentence, if P, then not P or Q, is not a tautology. We start by setting up a column for P, a column for Q, and a column for the sentence itself. But we're not going to fill out anything under the atomic sentences P and Q. Rather, our goal is to show that there is at least one valuation that makes the sentence false. So we assign the sentence the value false, here seen in red under the main connective. Then our goal will be to work backwards to figure out what assignment of truth values to P and Q result in the truth value false for this whole sentence. For a conditional, we know it can only be false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So let's start with the antecedent. The antecedent is just P. So we need to assign P the value true. There in the antecedent we assign it true and since that's just a simple statement letter we can copy that over to our assignment for the valuation the statement letter P will always be true in this. And since we've assigned P true, we know that not P there in the consequent will have to be false. We have to complete this conditional. We know that for the whole conditional to be false, in red, we need the antecedent to be true, we already got that, and the consequent to be false. So that's that disjunction in purple, and I've assigned it false, because that's how we're going to get the conditional to turn out false. Well, the only way for a disjunction to be false is for both disjuncts to be false. Not P is already false, but both disjuncts have to be, so we have to make Q false as well. Once we make Q false, we copy that valuation to the front of the truth table, and now we've completed our one-line truth table showing that this sentence is not a tautology. 
because when P is true and Q is false, this sentence is false. And since a tautology can never be false, but this sentence can be, we know it's not a tautology. Similar reasoning, but with opposite truth values, will apply to proving that something is not a contradiction. Remember that a contradiction is a sentence that's false on every valuation. So we need a whole truth table to prove that something is a contradiction, but to show that it's not a contradiction, we can use just one line. And we're going to look at the same sentence again. So it turns out it wasn't a tautology, and it's going to turn out it's not a contradiction either. The procedure we're going to use is going to be very similar, except we're going to start by assigning the sentence value true. Because if we can show that it's true, then we know it's not a contradiction. It's not always false. Here's the completed one-line table. I knew, remember our shortcuts from last video, that the conditional would be true as long as the antecedent was false. So I started by assigning false to P, and that transferred over to the valuation in the first column. Then it turned out I could actually assign Q either true or false, and the whole sentence would be true. I chose true, the other would be fine as well. So again, what the table shows is that there's at least one valuation. Here we have if P is false and Q is true, that makes this sentence true. So it can't be a contradiction. We can also use a single line truth table to show that two sentences are not equivalent. So remember that two or more sentences are equivalent if they have the same truth value on every valuation. That should lead you to reason that to show that they're not equivalent, we have to show that there's at least one valuation where their truth values differ. So here are example sentences. The negation of P and Q, that's one, and the other is not P and Q. For multiple sentences again, we pick our simple sentence letters, P and Q, but leave their truth values unassigned. And then we assign each sentence to a different column. To show that these are not equivalent, we want to assign them different truth values, and then arrive at some valuation on which it's possible for them to have different truth values. I chose to make the first sentence true, and the second sentence false. Do note though that for this test, the test of two sentences being not equivalent, you might have to sometimes swap which one is true and which one is false in order to get the proof that they're not equivalent. Again, we're going to now have to work backwards to assign values to P and Q that give these whole sentences these truth values, true for the first and false for the second. Since the first sentence, the negation of a conjunction, I assign true, that means I have to make the conjunction false. So that explains that black F. And then I know that for a conjunction to be false, at least one of the conjuncts is going to have to be false. So either P is going to have to be false or Q is going to have to be false. Which one I choose is going to depend on that second sentence. Note that you may have to try a few different valuations of P and Q to make your table work out. For me, I tend to try to look ahead before I write things out. So when I look at what I have now, I know that I have to make P and Q false in the first sentence and not P and Q false in the second sentence. I can satisfy both of those conditions by making Q false. Then it turns out it doesn't matter what truth value I assign to P. So I chose true. All you need to show is at least one valuation that gives these different truth values. 
So if you arrive at one that's different than the one I arrive at, that's okay too. As long as it gets those truth tables of the complete sentences to come out right. And what the end point of our truth table shows is that by assigning the value true to P and false to Q, I can get a valuation where these sentences have different truth values showing that they're not equivalent. Another property that we can prove with a single line truth table is satisfiability. A set of sentences is unsatisfiable if there is no row on which they are all true. To prove unsatisfiability then we need the full truth table. But we can show that a set of sentences is satisfiable with just one line because all we need is to show that at least one valuation makes all of the sentences true together. So the example that we're going to look at is these three sentences, the negation of P and Q, P or Q, and if Q then R. In this set of sentences we have three different atomic statement types, P, Q, and R, those make up our first three columns and we leave them blank for now. And then the three sentences we're interested in go in the next three columns and we'll see whether or not they can all be true together. Again in red here we have them all assigned true under their main connective. And then we'll work backwards to the valuation that makes them all true. Looking at the first sentence the negation of P and Q is true. If that's the case, I have to make P and Q in its scope false. So I have that marked in black there. And then if I look at the second sentence, I also need to make the assignment of P or Q true. So I should know that P and Q can be false while P or Q is true if one of those two, P or Q, is true and the other is false. And we see that here. I decided to make P true and Q false. The reason is that when I looked at the last sentence, I knew that the conditional, if Q then R, would be true as long as Q, the antecedent, was false. So if I made Q false, that conditional would be true, no matter what R was. In the second sentence, I knew that if I made P true, that would make that whole sentence true, the whole disjunction true, no matter what the value of Q was. So that gives me P is true and Q is false, and I can double check that if P is true and Q is false in the conjunction in the first sentence, that would make the whole conjunction false. Then I can assign R whatever truth value I like and still have that conditional turn out false. I chose to assign R false. If you're feeling uncertain about this one, try pausing the video to double check that this valuation does in fact make each of these sentences true. And since we've shown that there is a valuation that makes each of the sentences in this set true, we've shown that this set is satisfiable, exactly what we hope to prove. Finally, we only need a single line to prove invalidity. A valid argument is one where there is no valuation on which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. To prove validity then, we need to show every row of the truth table. But to show that an argument is invalid, we just have to show that at least one valuation makes the premises true and the conclusion false. So here's our example argument. P and R is premise 1, Q then R is premise 2, and our conclusion is Q. In the truth table, 
In the truth table, we leave our atomic sentence valuations blank for now and go on to make our assignments to the premises and the conclusion. Each of the premises must be true and the conclusion in purple must be false. And again, we now have to determine what truth values of P, Q, and R create these truth values for the premises and conclusion. Since the conclusion must be false and is, it's just the sentence letter Q, that's easy. I can just transfer that over to the valuation in the second column. Then I have to figure out what can I assign to P and R in order to make the two premises true. The first premise is a conjunction. A conjunction can only be true when both conjuncts are true. That means that P has to be true and R has to be true. So I filled that in in the first and third columns of the table. Then I just need to double check that this assignment makes the second premise true as well. So I've assigned false to Q and true to R. Well, as long as the antecedent is false, we know that the conditional is false, so this assignment works. Since we've shown that it's possible to make the premises true and the conclusion false, we've demonstrated that this is an invalid argument. Lesson 4 covers a lot of what we can do and show with truth tables. So you should now know how to use a truth table to test whether a sentence is contingent, a tautology, or a contradiction, and when it isn't any of those. When a set of sentences is satisfiable, unsatisfiable, or equivalent, to test whether a set of sentences entails another sentence, and whether an argument is valid or invalid. You should also know when it's possible to use certain shortcuts to reduce the work of constructing a truth table, and when it's possible to use partial or one-line truth tables to test certain properties.